have a break in. I know who you are. I know what you think you're doing. You don't want to get hurt. Keep your mouth shut and don't have a fucking muscle. The chimps are infected. They're, they're highly contagious. They've been given an inhibitor. Infected with what? In order to cure, you must first understand. Infected with what? Rage. Welcome back, everyone. It's Forgotten Circus. So uh, today I'm going to be going over uh, a movie that's in the development now, 28 years later. So if you don't know, this is the third installment to 28 days later and 28, uh, 28 weeks later, which I'm going to get into, too. Um, it's one of those movies that just... So let me, let me tell you something about this. Um, it's one of those... I mean, 28 days later, 28 weeks later, 28 years later, uh, 56 minutes later, uh, 3,436 milliseconds later. Why is it always later? Why can't it just be today? But um, this is one of those movies that I'm on, I'm on the fence about it. Do I want it to be made? Are we zombied out? Is it just too much zombie? What, what zombies what can you do with zombies even more that you haven't already done i mean you even took it to other levels with resident evil zombies and this whole movie had the con don't get me wrong so i'm going to get into my likes and why i'm on the fence about do i want to see it yes for nostalgia purposes but do we need it so let's take a trip back down memory lane <laughs> So let me let me let me tell you how this starts with my love for these movies. So I remember when I was this was years and years ago. Later, um, I went. I, I used to I used to go to this guy right, and I'll never forget his name, Paul. This guy would he would get DVDs, and this one burning DVDs and bootlegs. People could get screeners now. Um, I can say that now because I don't. I actually go to the movies, but I used to go to this dude like for real. Every single week, I would, it was like fifteen dollars, man. And I, he was like my my plug for uh, movies coming out because he would get the screeners like oof, months before it come out. And then sometimes he would get some some gems that were actually the full movie. Like I don't know how this dude would do. Back then, this guy was connected. He was connected. This that dude was Ready Player One before Ready Player One. All right, trust me. So. I used to go to him and every every week, like, uh, I don't even know the day or whatever, but he would just give me a whole bunch of DVD. He was like, try because I, I love movies. I would watch movies all the time, so he'd just throw me any movies. It could be love stories. It could be anything. So I, I just love cinema. That's kind of why I do this channel. So there was, I, I, remember, I remember going, and he was like, hey, um, I got this, and then you could just have this one for free. And I was like, what, what is that? He was like, I don't know, some uh, foreign movie. I haven't watched it because he usually he was burning so many and he really wasn't why I, I get it. You know, like whatever, just making money. So then I remember I was gonna watch another movie and uh it was scratched. The CD was scratched. See, that's what he has. And if you didn't have that little thing for the CD that could fix it, yeah, it was done, it was scratched. So I was like, oh whatever. So I just threw that in and and let me tell you something. When I watched 28 days later. I was like, what is this? This is crazy. I've never seen that was before you seen zombies like move like that. And, and and let me tell you something. This movie was made for like, what was it? It was something ridiculous. I I might be low balling, but like eight million dollars and made so much money in the United States because it released uh, um, in Europe first, I believe. So this guy, he had given that to me like months and months before it actually came out in the U.S., which was crazy. And then so I remember I went back, I went back to it like I went back to him that day and he was like, what's up, man? What's what? Because usually if I came back to him, he'd be like, is this scratch CD or I reburn another one? So I was like, have you seen this shit? And he was like, what do you No, I haven't seen it. I was like, yo, we need to watch this shit, dude. So we watched it, and he was like, holy shit. I was like, yeah. And then I started getting, like, it was funny. I started telling people about it, and then I'm not going to say. I may or may not have lent the copy out that I got. 
that's neither here nor there. I'm probably out of statute of limitations right now, but um, yeah, so watched it over and over. And then I went to see it in the theater, and then other people were like, yo, this movie, it was just so great. It was so different. It was pure. It was one of those that it just, it just, it was a surprise hit, and they did so much with less. And it made so much more. It was pure filmmaking in that first one. And then 28 weeks later it came out. And it was it was it was okay. It was like, eh, okay. But uh, sometimes when you see a movie like that and it ends, you just want to leave it like that. But they kind of left it kind of open in uh 28 weeks later. I mean, you, you had the, so let me tell you about 28. <laughs> so you don't understand. Nobody would know Silly Murphy, Killian Murphy, whatever, if it wasn't for that movie. However you want to say his name. Danny Boyle he still did train spotting and all that, but there was just something about this movie that had all the pizzazz. It was, it's one of those gems that you find in the mud. So you wouldn't have, and this, this catapult, who else was there? No, no, Noemi Harris was in it. Brendan Gleason, Brendan Gleason was kind of already established. Um, so I know I'm getting kind of deep in the weeds here. And then Jeremy Renner and Idris Elba in the next one. Um, it was kind of before their big stardom, but it kind of helped skyrocket. But Asillian or Killian Murphy, how you ever want to say it, Paul vaulted from this movie. This dude is shot up. Now it was a gradual one, but he was starting to get bigger and bigger roles. But I just remember those fir that first scene with the rage scene, right? And then just him coming out of the hospital. It the, the whole movie just. Sunk me. But it's one of those, do, do we need it? Is there too many zombies? What else can you do? But so Cillian Killian Murphy is um, teaming up with Danny Boyle again because Danny Boyle directed this and did, he made so much out of nothing, which was crazy. And they're keeping this really under wraps. The, but I'll, I'll be honest with you. They're going to have to reinvent the wheel on zombies. We didn't see so many different versions. It's almost as bad as so many Batmans. It's not. It's actually worse. You have to reinvent the wheel. There has to be another aspect that you can use to incorporate with the zombies. You have to make it captivating. You have to pull people in again. Because yeah, we, we, we've seen the fast zombies... I know your zombies were different in that movie. They were more, they were more rage. Like it was, it was, it was a virus that was lab created. And then a lot of people took from that too. So we've seen a lot of that. So how can you reinvent the wheel on this? And it's 28 years, it's 28 years later. So it's like, have we, have we lost? Have we failed? Is the rage virus still a thing? Is there something else that mutated from it? You got, there's so much stuff that's already, you've already seen in other movies with zombies. So there has to be a different aspect. And if they're keeping us, keeping this under wraps and they're not letting anybody see the plot, it could be a good thing or bad thing. But it is Danny Boyle and, and uh, Murphy, I'm just going to say Murphy, and they're working on it together because I know this is something that catapulted both of their careers. So it's one of those things that they want to come, uh, go back to and handle with care. Understandable, but you really have to have a different starting point than what we've already seen. This has got to be something that you've never, uh, that you've never seen from zombies ever. If you're even going to take it that route. So they could spin it the whole way, go off the nostalgia, building up to it. And that could not even be the biggest part. But where do you go? That's the most confusing thing. Zombie movies now are hard. They're hard to make. Because we know, now we just go just to go because it's the movie out that week. Let's be honest. And I love zombies. I love horror and stuff like that. But how how far can you go with it? It need, you need to reinvent it. That's exactly what you have to do. You have to literally break it all down and recreate to get the imagination back for that type of stuff. It's going to be hard. It's going to be real hard. But um, 
I think Danny Boyle and they can pull it off and make it gritty. Over he was doing that oversaturation before a lot of people were man. Deep dark tones, cinematography at weird angles, over the top angles. If he could bring that element back and do it in the way of like maybe reigniting the fire for watching zombie movies again. This might be the guy to do it, and he's going to have the actors do it, and I think he should pull some of the original cast that was still surviving through, um, bring them back a little bit. Bring them back into it, definitely. But anyway, um, tell me what you think. Do you think this is a good idea? Do you think this is a bad idea about um, 20? So if you haven't seen it, spoiler alert, go see it. Uh, 28 weeks later, 28 days later, and now this third installment. But do you think we're zombified out? Is it too much? Do you think that they could go a different route? Are you open to that, or you're just done with the zombies? I don't know. Like, um, comment, comment about it. Um, so like, comment, and subscribe. And I want everyone to subscribe. It takes one little click just to subscribe, everyone. And I do mean everyone.